What is going on guys, DBG here, and today, 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 we are going to be going over the top 10 best value cards in NBA 2K20 to my team, or honestly, let's let's make it more accurate because I've definitely forgotten somebody, there's definitely someone that I have forgotten, so let's just say 10 of the best value players, and this is not purely going to be the best cheap players, some of these guys are cheap, some of these guys are expensive, and I was going to do a top list under 20k, but I decided to go for this one instead because, like, it's it. A lot of the twenty k players, I would be um, would be like, for example, like Sadiq Bay is two thousand MT. He would be in or whatever price he is now. He would be in the under twenty k, under ten k, and under five k. So that is just going to be value. The first player, the best value player in the game, Sadiq Bay. Current gen, next gen, doesn't matter. He's so good. Like, I, you don't understand how good this card is. This guy is, like, he's... Like, I joke about him being the best player in the game. He's obviously not. But, like, he is as good, in my opinion, as, like, Diamond LeBron. That is the level I put Sadiq Bey at. I've used Diamond LeBron. I've used Sadiq Bey. Give me that snipe. Like, Sadiq Bey at less than 2,000 MT. Like, this is what you're getting with this card. Like, let's compare him to... I'm trying to think... A card people will use. Wait a minute, why, why do I own current Kawhi Leonard? Um, Even just comparing him to LeBron's Ruby card. So, like, Sadiq Bey has got 29 golds. He's got, like, all the key golds. And then his silvers include, like, clamps, a few defensive ones. He's got Eddie Jones release, which is unreal. Um... Intimidator, Silver, he's got Space Gear to stop and go, as well as that 6-7, got a decent wingspan as well. Look at these stats, good in the post, good from mid, really good from three. He's got a solid standing, good driving dunk. Ball handle, leaves a bit to be desired, but it's not bad at all, 79. He's got an 80 block, 80 steal, 84 print defense, 82 interior. Like, that is insanely good. As well as, like, 84 offense and defensive rebounding. Solid speed, not unbelievable speed, but solid speed. Speed ball acceleration, really got a lot of quickness. Like, and with one of the best releases in the game, like, Sadiq Bey really is that guy. Sadiq Bey, is he in the squad here? No, nah, there's no point trying to use him there, but Sadiq Bey is that dude. I'm telling you, like, there's a reason why he's he's in my best team. Like, there is a reason why I still, to this day, use Sadiq Bey. Then, we're going for another cheap player. We're going for another cheap player in the form of Mathis Teibel. So, Thibel came out in the same batch of cards as Sadiq Bey. And this could be the best Ruby 2 card for the rest of the year. Like, he's now more expensive. I could have bought a bunch of him at like 1,000 MT. He's sitting at like 2,000 MT. So, I don't think he's quite as good as Sadiq. But, I mean, he's not far off, really, is he? So, he's around like 1,700, 1800 MT. What you're getting with Mathis Thibel is you're getting a lockdown defense. So his primary position is small forward. And his offense isn't good, but his release is really good, and he gets shooting badges. So, like, for me, he's, like, a better version of Bruce Bowen. So he gets, like, catch and shoot, teardropper, glue hands, pick pocket, pick dodger goal, clamps goal, defense leader, interceptor, intimidator, off-ball pass, post-move lockdown, bailout, set shooter, clutch shooter, green machine, anchor braces, menace, hustler, so he's, and he's also got like silver quick first step. He gets great dunk animations. Even though his like, driving dunk rating is only 75, he gets great dunk animations. His three-point rating of 86 is good with how good his release is. Um, 86 ball handle is big as well. Such good steal and perimeter defense. A good block rating as well. Not the greatest interior. Thankfully, the block rating will make up for that a little bit. He's got 86 speed, 82 speed, but 86 ladder, 95 ladder. And the big thing with him, his tendencies are completely juiced. Like, 99 on ball steal. Sorry, my triggers are in a really weird way. Like, I can't even... I can't rest my hand on the left trigger. Like, you know when most of the time you rest your hand on the two triggers and then you press the trigger? Like, my left trigger is so um, sensitive right now that I can't even rest my finger on my left trigger. Otherwise, it'll... Uh, it will do something. Which is why I'm constantly slowing down in the game. Because I'm constantly accidentally holding left trigger. But, um... 99 deception, 99 steal, 99 block. Fantasy. Like, that is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. Like, he's legitimately 10 glitched. 
He's Tando glitched and we are in November. He is a Tando glitched 2000 MT Ruby who can shoot the ball and is God on defense. Mathis Thibel, unreal. And then we're going to a guy who I'm pretty sure was on this list last time. Supremely underrated, Josh Smith. Josh Smith, like Josh Smith might end up coming in as my center. Like I might go and buy, I might end up buying Josh Smith. I really might. So if we're looking at Josh Smith, like you're looking at under 10,000 MT. Like that is a crazy price for a card this good. There's a reason why you still see a lot of the competitive players that play this game still using Josh Smith. Like I just want to check if there's a badge one here. This one here is an extra gold badge. I don't know what the extra gold badge is, but there is one. If it's something of note, I will pay the extra 1,000 MT for it. Acrobat, Lob City Finisher, Rim Protector, Chase Down Posterizer, Rise Up, Limitless Takeoff. You already had Hustler on gold. Is Hustler the badge? Hustler, Limitless Takeoff, Slithery. I don't even know which badge it is. Acrobat? Is it Acrobat? Yeah, it's Acrobat from Silver to Gold. Yeah, I'm not spending a thousand on an Acrobat. Yeah, so... Ooh, this one is 11. Brick Wall was added. I don't even know what else was added. Brick Wall Box. Box in the bar badge to have. Yeah, this is probably worth 10, 450. Did I buy him? That was a very, very uh, long winded way of uh, putting Josh Smith into my squad, probably for Aiden. The way I like to play Josh Smith's probably going in for Aiden. But Josh Smith, basically, what you're getting is you're getting a super fast, super good defensive center who can kind of shoot the ball. Like, his defense is unbelievable. His speed is ridiculous. His lateral quickness is insane. He plays lanes really well. He shoots the ball at a mediocre rate. Super, super good player. And again, for 10,000 MT, the fact that I just bought him there and I don't like spending MT just shows just how good that guy is. Um, point guard, there we go. Um, but yeah, he's so freaking good. He's so good. Then, another player in my squad. We're on. This is the most expensive player we have and it's Nick Batum. Like, for Nick Batum's price, he's brilliant. He really is brilliant. Like, if you're looking at Nick Batum, he's like 50-ish km. He's like 50 KMT. He takes 20 minutes, 30 minutes to Evo max. So, like, you're looking at realistically 50 KMT for his pink diamond. Like, with his pink diamond, the real difference is, is like, he gets he gets a plus five driving dunk, which matters. And it's just the badges that are really the difference. You get half needle threader. And you get half bullet. Let's say, you know, he already comes with half bullet, doesn't he? He gets half slithery and half needle threader. Needle threader is the big badge. And then again, he gets a couple of extra gold badges. It's not like it's the be all and end all. Like, I didn't notice that much of a difference between the two of these guys, but I did think the pink diamond was better. Um, what you get with Batum is you're getting an absolute elite shooter who can play at the three or play at the four. He can guard ball, he can guard inside. He shoots the ball, he handles the ball well. Batum, if he still, if Dame Lillard behind the back wasn't patched, Batum would legitimately be the best small forward in the game, in my opinion. He does everything well. Like, he really does. And as far as, like, 3 and D cones go, man, he's, he's the elite of the elite. He might be the best. Like, everything Batum does in game is fantastic. So, yeah, Batum is here. And then, coming out in the exact same set as Batum, a player that I think is a slightly worse version of Nick Batum. Robert Covington. So Robert Covington came out the same day as Batum did. And a lot of people were not particularly high on Rocco. And like, there's a reason why I put Rocco back in my squad. Like, you're looking 7,000 MT for his Amethyst. So it's 7k for his Amethyst. I want to check what his Ruby is. Like, he literally, you evolved him in five. I evolved him in six minutes. So it's 6k MT. So again, just pay the extra... Well, if you want to evo to Ruby, you can. Like, for the sake of a few minutes, just paying the extra 1k is not going to kill you. But, like, 7100 for Roko. 
And what you're getting with Robert Covington is he's 6'7", but he has a huge player build, so he feels like he's about 6'9". That's the, pro that's the thing with Roko. When he used to be 6'9", his player build made him feel like he was like 6'11", 7 foot. Like. So he has got one off one Hall of Fame off-ball pass badge, but he gets like catch or two corner specials. He gets post-spin ignition, which for me is very important. He gets gold clamps, gold intimidator, gold interceptor, gold blinders, gold set shooter, green machine, fast twitch. He's a silver rebound chaser, which is good if you want to play on power forward. He's also got like 86 three ball, 80 driving dunk, 79 ball handle, which is not great, but his defense is really solid. Speed's really, really good, and lateral is really good. So like Roko, he's not quite Nick Batum, but I mean, outside, he's Nick Batum without the playmaking. Nick Batum with like bullet with needle threader and stuff. He gets like some elite playmaking bags. He's literally just Nick Batum without the playmaking. That is what Roko is. And then we've got a new card that is super cheap today because he didn't get a Evo, and it's Paul Millsap. Hey, like Paul Millsap came out yesterday. I saw my money for 11k, and like he's now down under 10k. Basically, Millsap is really good, and people have just kind of slept on that. So Millsap for night, man, I might buy Millsap back. Man, for 9k, I think I might, I might hold off, but my, my Millsap is good. 8750, he's a steal. This is DeAndre Ayton again. DeAndre Ayton didn't get the Evo and he tanked in price. And this is DeAndre Ayton again. Like he got the Evo, he would have went way up in price. And because he didn't get the Evo, he tanked. Like I, I got out on my one a little bit earlier before he tanked this much. But we are getting with Millsap is 20. And Millsap will be, you'll be able to add hot badges to Millsap as well. He has 20 goals, one half. Tireless event is a good badge. It's catch and shoot, corner specialist, post spin technician. It's gold clamps, gold hook specialist. He has a gold dream shake, gold post playmaker, and like silver quick first step, good ball handle. He's not like downhill. Um, the big thing for me is like Roko versus Millsap. It's like three point shooting are the same. Um, you basically get for Millsap, you get better in the post. For Roko, you get better, way better defensive stats. Um, in terms of steal and block, primary defense, the interior defense stats are the same, but steal and block are important. Rebounding, they're very similar. Speed, you get more speed and more lateral on Roko, but you get more strength. Basically, do you want... At small forward, I would run Roko. At power forward, I'd probably run Millsap. They're very similar price, and I already own Roko, so I might as well just use Roko instead of Millsap. Millsap might come in, but these guys are very similar, and they're very similar price, so I gotta put both of them here on the list. Then we've actually got what might be the most important player, or most expensive player, because I forgot this card was on the list. Uh, it's Moses Malone. So Moses Malone, like he's like 50-ish K and like I don't like the character doesn't suit my play style, but I mean he's just like way better than Dwight Howard. Like if you want he is one of the best centers in the game. Point blank period, like, like he's no question about it. One of the best centers in the game. So I think I bought mine for 45. Or in around 48. Like I don't think I spent too much more than that. But like look at these. Like 97 offense, not or 90 offense, 97 defense overall. At this stage in the game, that type of card for his price is nuts. Like half Intimidator, half Post Hook Specialist, which doesn't matter because Post Hooks are blocked every time. Mouse in the house, he's got Rebound Chaser Hall of Fame, Grace Under Pressure. As well as that, he's got Brick Wall, Gold, Post Spin Gold, Rim Protector, Interceptor on Gold. He's got Giant Slayer on Strippable, Hustler, Catch and Shoot on Silver. And um, he's got a great three pointer, or a great mid range, a not great three pointer. Insane in the post. Really solid dunker, but he's got a really good block rating. He's got a great perimeter or great interior defense. Not to raise perimeter defense. Sorry, again, my left trigger is just way, way too sensitive. Um, problem is his steal rating is really, really low, which is a bad, horrible thing on next gen. He's well as hit his hands. But look at that speed. Like he's got plus ten speed on DeAndre Jordan, plus nineteen speed ball, and plus eight, plus ten acceleration. And like DeAndre Jordan's known as a fast center, and he's got really good lateral quickness as well. Like. He is easily one of the best centers in the game. A little bit undersized, 6'10". Does not suit my play style because I need, kind of want my centers to shoot. But Moses Malone, still really, still really, really good. And then we've, I'm putting this guy on the list because he's the best offline player in the game. Like, if you are ever playing this game, first of all, this guy can't be really stopped. He cannot be stopped. It's Ha Sung Jin. So... In terms of my investments, this is one of my investments I regret because I could have bought like a hundred of him at a thousand MT and tripled my money. But like you're paying about two thousand eight hundred for Hasang Jin. 
He's the biggest player in the game. Forget Yao Ming. Forget any of these other guys. Hassan Jin is the biggest player in the game. So, he comes at like, go post, spin, ignition, put back, boss, lob city. Like, he's an interior big. Comes at like, interceptor, rise up, host riser. He's got 63 ball. Not a good ball. Or 63 ball, which, I mean, he sometimes can hit. But he's got a mid-range shot and a decent enough race. He will hit, midi hit middies. Insane in the post. But, like, 86 block. 90 interior. He's just huge as well. And he's got 62 speed. Like, you compare him to Mark Eaton with 25 speed. He's got 62. 95 strength. 60 lateral quickness. Again, comparing him to, like, someone like a Mark Eaton. If you're ever playing this game offline, there will and there will be situations. Like, we got to be smart. Like, we, we all need players to cheese the CPU. We all need players for offline. So, like, later on in the year, um, when... Later on in the year, when, like, Spotlight Sims or something comes out... And we don't want to spend a whole bunch of MT on contracts because we might need to play 50 games. Like, Ha Sung Jin is, like, half the price of a diamond contract-wise, and he's going to be the best center. Like, all you need centers to do in those games is set screens and block shots and dunk. And that's what Ha Sung Jin does at the... Probably as well as any center in the game. As well as that, if... You can just play bully ball with him. Like, he's not the best center in the game for online play. He's the best for offline. But at the same time, if you want to use him online, just spam and play bully ball inside and paint mash. I mean, he's going to do that better than anyone else. He really is. Then, we've got a bit of a weird one here. As our second last player. I'm going Kawhi Leonard. Like, a lot of people have... I know a lot of people have kind of mixed feelings about Kawhi. And there are so many Kawhis. Um, enabled. There we go. A lot of people kind of mixed feelings on this Kawhi because he's kind of old. But, like... I still, to this day, think that this Kawhi is one of the best defensive players in the game. Is there any of these that don't have a 7.0? Oh my god. But I still, to this day, think this Kawhi is one of the best defensive players in the game. Like, he will clamp up. Like, for me, he's that step above, like, a Robert Compton. I know, stats-wise, he's not. I know, like, if you compare him to, like, Roko, stats-wise. He's small forward, so I can't. But, um... If you're looking at his stats, he's got an 83 ball, not great post game, decent driving dunk, his ball, he can't dribble the ball, only a 75 steal, 91 perimeter defense, only 83 speed, 90 ladder quickness, like you're like, okay, how the hell does this guy compete, even with a Matisse Thibel, he just does, he just does, he's Kawhi Leonard, he gets some of the best defensive animations in the game, he's got Ray Allen base, he's got intercept, he's got intimidator, um, he's got sniper on gold as well, I'm pretty sure. Catch and shoot on silver. Like, he's not going to miss any shots when he's wide open. He is the definition of a 3 and D count. Who cares that he came out in week one? He's still around 20k, and I still think for around 20k, this guy is a great buy. But then, but then, we got Eric Snow. A guy who's actually going to come back to, in today, probably coming back into my um, squad. It's... It's going to be a tough one between Eric Snow, and I don't know whether I want to run Snow or Clarkson. But um, just because of what I need for my team. But Eric Snow is coming right back in. He potentially could come right back into the squad. So Eric Snow right here. You are paying a little bit over the asking price for a Ruby for Eric Snow. And you always have from the start. Like you're paying in around that 4 to 5k MT range. And I still think he's a steal for that price. I really do. So, like, for that price, it's even just compared to Walt. You're getting... Yeah, he doesn't get half bullet or half floor general, but you're getting 26 golds. And the problem is, like, the thing is, you are getting shooting badges. You are getting shooting badges, quick first step sniper. All of these on Snow, and Snow's got an unbelievable release as well. Hustler, as well as Silver Intimidator, Silver Interceptor, but he's got Silver Limitless Spot and Silver Chef, which are huge. You guys saw my draft video, or my nobody spent video earlier in the draft. Snow carried. But in terms of shooting, 93 three ball for Snow. He's one of the best shooting point guards in. Like, as far as just. He's not the best 300 point guard because he doesn't get great dribble six, but he's one of the best pure catch and shoot point guards in the game. Um, he can't dunk, unfortunately. But he has got an insanely good steel perimeter defense, and his speed of 94 is better than Walt, and 95 a lot. Like, he, he's better than Walt. Like, Walt could come into my team, but he's just not. Eric Snow is that dude. He really is that dude. So, yeah, that is pretty much it. These are the top 10 best value players. I didn't want to put in the likes of Suggs and stuff because he was on the list last month. 
So, the guys we have, Sadiq Bey, Matisse Thibel, Josh Smith, Nick Batum, Robert Connington, Paul Millsap, Moses Malone, Hassan Jin, Eric Snow, and Kawhi Leonard. So, I'm happy with these guys. Let me know if I missed anyone because I 100% did. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.